Welcome to Unity Talks, where the hiring experts of Dallas-based recruiting firm Unity Search engage in lively discussion with successful business leaders to dissect their careers and how they got to where they are today, the obstacles overcome to reach their success, and steps they've taken to stay at the top of their respective fields. So listen in as we provide you with the thought-provoking conversation and ideas that keep industries moving forward. It's so great to have you back for another edition of the Unity Talks podcast. I'm your host, David Cathy, and we do a show every other week, and we talk to business leaders in DFW, specifically accounting, finance, and tax business leaders, since that's what Unity Search focuses on in our recruiting firm. And this week, I've got a fantastic guest, but I'm going to start off by asking you a question. Did you know what you wanted to be when you were in sixth grade, 12 years old, 13 years old? I can tell you I had no clue what I wanted to be. In fact, my, my aspirations changed by the hour and probably by the mood I was in. My interest came and went. However, our guest today knew what she wanted to be when she was in sixth grade by a class she took. And we'll get into that here in a second. Laura Bracken, our guest today. Thanks so much for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is going to be excellent. So a couple of things about Laura before we get back to that answer to figure out how she knew what she wanted to be when she was in sixth grade. So Laura Bracken is the chief accounting officer at At Home Group, which if you have a wife like mine or you are female, you've probably been to At Home Group. Matter of fact, one of my business partners her and I would go shopping for furniture for our office. Oh, that's great. And we got a lot of it at at home. There you go. Um, Professionally, she has a CPA. She started her career in Big Four Public Accounting, PwC. She is the CAO, again, of At Home, which is a publicly traded company who is actually getting bought out to go private. We can chat about that maybe if we have time. Yes, absolutely. Personally, She's never strayed too far away from DFW. It's what we found out. Um, She has two kiddos. One daughter is 21 years old and her son is 17, entering her senior year. So she's fixing to join me, perhaps, in the empty nest crowd. Right. Which is bittersweet. It is a little. Yeah. 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 But happy. Happy for him, too. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> so we're going to start out. How did you know? 12 years old, Keller, Texas. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I knew I was going to be an accountant. But there was yeah. one other option. Right. A computer programmer. Yeah. So how did that come about? <laughs> well, I was you know, lucky enough to be at a school that uh, thought that you know, thinking about your career at a young age was important. Um, so we had in sixth grade the opportunity to take a class that was around career investigation. So took an entire class and at the end of it, they ask you a bunch of questions along the way. You do a bunch of like research around what are different career options and what do they, you know, afford you. At the end, it said, I should be a computer programmer or an accountant. (laughs) So two things, I said, okay, A, my dad happens to be an accountant. He's a CPA Mm -hmm. as well. Um, And then as a computer programmer, I thought I may not actually get to talk to people and that wasn't cool with me. So. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's so cool. Like I, I, I could barely like walk one foot in front of the other. <laughs> and your school, like you just said, lucky yeah. enough to go to a school that actually gave you classes like that, right. which, you that's know, right. it's crazy. I didn't even write this down, but I feel like our educational system, you see this a lot, like, yeah. shouldn't we have classes on money, how to manage yeah. money, yeah. what you want to do, different yeah. options for your career. And I don't mm-hmm. know that High school and does my that. son right now, he took, he just got done with a business class that is all about, he had to budget and, and he, he did. Had, yeah. He had to invest his money and find the best investment options. And he had to go through, um, finding the best interest rate on a car. It was a lot of really practical stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. So we yeah. need more of that. So anybody who's in the education system in Texas, we need more of those classes. That's, That's right. fantastic. That's right. Now he also took an accounting class and decided it wasn't for him. Yeah. Well, I would say that, may, <laughs> I, I, you know, I would say that he's smart. Your son's really smart. You would might say, oh, I don't know, because that's what you do, right? Oh, no, I agree with him. He's yeah. not, it's not, it's not tailor made for him. No. Neither one of my kids would have anything. <laughs> they think it's funny that I'm actually in a, a business job and I have to wear these types of clothes. Mm-hmm. They think it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you started working at a very early age, yeah. and that's one of the reasons why you stayed close to the DFW area. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that job, because interestingly, yeah. that job 
helped you get better for what you do today. That's right. Yeah. It kind of launched my career as it is today. So I actually started it at uh, Kmart as a, you know, just a cashier and it was in high school, one of my first jobs and just worked my way up to a supervisor and then supervisor trainer and then into the cash office where I reconciled the cash and, you know, receivables and all the, you know, credit card transactions to the daily sales every day. And it, uh, you know, it kind of helped pique my interest even further in, in the accounting world yeah. so, and in retail. So I've tried to stay, you know, in that vein as I've, as I've kind of progressed in my career. Yeah. And she really has. I mean, we're talking about, it was a stop with GameStop That's right. in there. That's You're right. at, at home. Yeah. Both yeah. are, one's a big box, one's a retail brick and mortar store that's, right. that's probably trying to go online a yes, lot now. Yes, right? that's right. So it really has helped in your career. And for our audience who is younger mm -hmm. and trying to start out, Kmart used to be a store that I think is like Walmart. Yeah. If you're in Texas, there are no more Kmart stores yeah. here. No, there's very few left. Very yeah. few left. It is it is one that did not, uh, you know, didn't change with the times and got yeah. left behind, yeah. unfortunately. I, well, I had to look it up. Yeah. So there's less than 20 stores now, okay. I believe. Okay, there you there, go. There used to be like 2,200, mm -hmm. 2,300 stores. Yeah. Now we're at yeah. like 20, 19-ish yeah. stores. Yeah, that's it, crazy. Yeah, it used to be... I liked Kmart back in the day, yeah, right? Because you yeah. could find anything. That's right. So it really helped you. And one of the things that it does, because you, you stayed on high school through college. I did, yes. Okay, so that, um, that's got to instill some type of work ethic. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. And you, can you talk a little bit about like what that taught you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, responsibility showing up every day, giving it your all every day, you know, the, the typical things that you hope to find in an employee and mm -hmm. as, as an employee, you want to, you know, portray in yourself. So, um, you know, and it, it's something that um, for me, it was uh, an opportunity to continue to grow with a company and learn more. And I think that's what anybody, any of us want to be able to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it prepared you for the business world it did. that you were in today. So, if we're talking to a, a teenager today yeah. or someone who's beginning their career and they just graduated from college, mm -hmm. um, how do you, you know, a lot of times right now there's this, uh, maybe a misnomer, I don't know, I'd love your opinion. Mm -hmm. um, millennials, like the work ethic of millennials, mm -hmm. they just want to be given jobs and we're going to have Generation Z entering the workforce pretty soon mm -hmm. and, you know, that they just don't have that knuckle grinding work ethic. Right. Um, do you feel that way about the generation that's coming up or what are your thoughts? You know, I think, I think in any generation, you're going to have pockets of people that, that feel like they are entitled or, you know, they're owed something. Um, but in general, I think, you know, even, you know, my generation, um, can learn a little bit from the younger generation and, and, you know, you don't actually have to kill yourself or sacrifice yourself for your job. Um, the, you know, them wanting to have a good work-life balance is important, mm -hmm. I think. And I think that's really what they're looking for. I don't think they're looking necessarily all of them looking for, for handouts. So I don't see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your son's probably going to watch this and be like, way to go, mom. We're not, <laughs> we're not that bad. Um, no, I would agree with you because I think, I think it's just different. Yeah. That's all. That's like it's and it's not uh, what we were used to mm -hmm. when we began right. our careers, right. and so sometimes we're afraid of what's different. Absolutely. Look at co what COVID did for us and people working from home. I yeah. mean, for for at home at least, I know a lot of other companies felt the same way. We didn't miss a beat. We all went home and we did our jobs, and guess what? It all kept happening. And yeah. in spite of the fact that you know previously, the, you know leadership we probably felt like no we've all got to be in the office mm -hmm. and looking at each other to get things done and to be sure it's getting done but at the end of the day mm -hmm. we find out oh well we got home and we still got it done so now yeah. you know you see companies ourselves included going back to the office and offering more flexibility there yeah yeah mm -hmm. a lot more flexibility a lot it's more flexibility yeah. a hybrid option is what that's we right. see most customers do we were just talking about yeah. that with you yeah. on the way in yes that's where we're headed too yeah mm -hmm. So um, when you think about 
uh, you, you said earlier, I think we can learn from these other generations. My generation mm -hmm. can learn from millennials and Gen Z. Yeah. What else are they? So they're teaching us work-life balance. Yeah. What are, what are, how do we learn from them? We have to listen and watch what they do. And you, you mentioned working remote. They're much more tech savvy than we are. Yes, very. Um, yeah, so learning how to do things more efficiently, learning how to do things remotely and not, you know, pushing paper and, and you know, my, my team has done an amazing job of, of keeping up with what could be a very paper intensive process mm -hmm. in accounting um, and, and making it all, you know, paperless and on, online and available and, um, you know, they, they are quick to pick up how to, you know, do a virtual call and, you know, I think all of us can, can learn from that. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I think we need to look for spots mm -hmm. to learn from them. Mm -hmm. Like it needs to be something that's intentional. Yeah. And then to encourage it, I would think that uh, we would give them that verbal feedback. Yeah. Like, oh, that's really great. Yeah. You know, I learned this from you and that mm -hmm. that's a form of empowerment for sure. them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I definitely empower my team and listen to them. I mean, I mean, that's what I look for when I'm trying to hire somebody. I'm looking for somebody that knows more than I do, right? And that I could learn from. Um, and that's what I do. I, yeah. I hire the right people. I hire people that are even better than me and I give them the reins to run with it. So what you look for people, let's, let's hit the pause button on that real quick. So I want to okay. stop and, and chat about that. So, you know, there, there's the resume, which is the piece of paper and it's just, it's black letters on a white sheet of paper. Right. And then there's the characteristics of the person that's mm -hmm. sitting across the table from you. Mm -hmm. Um, I would imagine accounting, you're looking, you're, you're just looking at certain boxes that you're trying to check for the most part on a piece of paper. On the paper. Yes. Yep. And yes. then it's when they get across from you. So That's what right. are you looking for? Like you came from yourself working through school. Are you looking for someone that was working or uh, was involved in some other type of extracurricular activities or give us an idea of those qualities? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, like you said, on paper, if I've brought them in, I think mm -hmm. technically they're capable of doing the job. Or I wouldn't have brought them in, right? Um, it's definitely the soft skill side that you're trying to get a feel for when you see them in person, um, and and you talk to them, and you really get to know them. So I think I think for me, I don't. Everyone has a different background, right? And it, I don't. I wouldn't say just because you didn't work all the way through school or you didn't have some significant extracurricular activities that you're not. It's not going to make you a good employee, mm -hmm. right? Um, I want to know that you have character that you have you know good ethics right mm -hmm. um, I want to know that you're gonna work hard um, I think the important thing to me is that you come in and you are engaged and hungry you actually want the job mm -hmm. you actually are interested in the job I can't tell you how many people sit across from me and act almost disinterested mm -hmm. you know um, mm -hmm. just sitting there like okay what questions are you gonna ask me and and for me, I want, it's most important to me to know what questions do you have for me. I learn most from that. Like, yeah. are you really engaged? Because if you're really engaged, you should have a lot of questions for me. So this is really interesting. So I, I love that. I would agree with you completely. So I'm going to take it one step further on those questions. Mm -hmm. um, some people come in with prepared questions, right? Yes. And they flip open the book and they're reading them, or yes. you can tell that they're trying to memorize the questions and right. recall them, right? right? We're talking about one, two, three year people, right? right. Really young in their career. Right. right. And then you have people who it is a conversation. Yes. And they are just asking questions. Mm -hmm. They're clarifying. They're mm -hmm. understanding the direction that mm -hmm. at home or you want to go. Yes. And then they're coming up with questions to ask regarding that, which yes. that's what I heavily favor. Yes. I right. do too. Right. So to me, if you if you can sprinkle in questions along the way and you can be engaged and you and you 
you know, you're asking questions and you're, you know, following up as, as the conversation unfolds and it's more natural feeling, that's the better outcome. Um, I think you can still come across as prepared that way without, you know, mm-hmm. opening up your book and just starting to read down mm-hmm. your questions. But that said, I don't mind at the end if they revisit their questions that they wrote down just to make sure they asked everything, yep. right? But if they just sit there and, okay, I'm going to ask this question yep. just to ask a question, you know, yep. that's not yeah. not what I'm looking for either. It's like they haven't put enough thought into it. Like they're right. just trying to get a job and you want someone who wants this to be their career. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. And one of the things that we look for at our firm, and we talk about it a lot from a leadership team, is we look for people who are humble. Mm-hmm. We look for the, them people who are hungry and people who are smart, not that's IQ, right. but EQ. Yes. And that's yes. kind of what we're talking about. Oh, Here yeah. is EQ. That's right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Having that EQ is super important. Right. Because that shows you the runway that they could have in their career, how they're going to mix with your team, as well as what path they may go on that's outside of accounting. And I'm okay. sure you would want to hire someone like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Whenever I hire somebody in, I always tell them, you know, here are the different options that you have within the company. It's mm-hmm. not just this role. I try to give them a vision for what their career path could look like in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do think that what you said a few minutes ago is really great where you said, I don't mind at the end if they go through and they look at the questions because that shows like a little bit of a due diligence on their end to make sure that they've got everything they need answered. That's right. And I think that's great advice for both candidates who are looking for jobs and other leaders to to allow them that moment. That's right. You know, so thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I want to go ahead. I want to talk about your dad, though. Oh, yeah. Here, real quick. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. So let let's chat about dad for a second. Absolutely. So, dad, this this little section's for you here. <laughs> um, dad was a dad first. Yes. Mentor second. Absolutely. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. So tell us tell us a little bit about that relationship. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, I was lucky to have somebody in my life that you know had, we had similar interests, and you know, in a, being an accountant himself. Uh, you know, was somebody that I could, you know, look up to and, and emulate and learn from along the way um, to try to avoid my own pitfalls, if you will, mm-hmm. um, help navigate my career. Uh, you know, he was very successful. Uh, he was actually one, though, that he uh, he stayed with the same company over 30 years. So he oh was gosh. he started off in big in well, big eight back then, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then, um, then yeah, he, he went to the same company for the rest of his career after that. Wow. Yeah. So um, I didn't quite follow in those footsteps. <laughs> um, but <laughs> so if, if he had to say anything about my career path, he would probably think, eh, you know. Oh. Uh, but, but no, he was, he was always somebody there I could bounce things off mm-hmm. of. He was a good sounding board, or he still is, honestly. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mentioned something to you the other day where I said, said um, early, I, I was guessing early in your career, dad would probably talk to you about maybe more technical accounting functions mm-hmm. and uh, how you would handle something. Mm-hmm. And my guess is, is later in the career, it became more of the soft skills and people in leadership. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. share a little bit of how great it is to have a mentor because mm-hmm. it may not be your dad. It could be someone in the organization. It could be, they don't even have to be in the same city, right? Right. But having that mentor, talk a little bit about yeah. how, what that's meant for you as you've yeah. developed. Yeah. I think, you know, mentors are amazing. Not everyone's going to have a dad or somebody like that, but um, even just developing relationships along the way in your career path. So I have mentors for different aspects of my career, right? So I have mentors who were previously bosses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, who are further on in their career. Um, my dad, I would put in that bucket is further on in their career. Um, And then I have uh, peers that I consider mentors as well, right? So they're going through the same things I'm going through at the same time um, and, and, you know, bouncing things off them. So I think having that, those natural relationships are always going to be something that, um, that, that are important to people and help people grow and, and make the right choices in their career along the way. When you are looking for or want a mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you find it? Like, wh- yeah. what are the steps? Like, is there like a recipe for mm-hmm. it, or how does that materialize? For me, it is somebody that I respect, mm-hmm. right? So it's somebody who I have encountered along the way uh, that I thought, wow, 
they do that really well and I would like to be in that similar role or I would like to portray that similar image or whatever. Um, so along the way, I've naturally, um, you know, just kind of cultivated relationships with those individuals. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, formal mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. um, I have been a mentor and a mentee in those. I don't find them very useful, honestly. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're kind of forced sometimes. Yeah. Um, and not necessarily, even if you've been matched with, you know, different questions or whatever, I just don't, I don't find that they're lasting, typically. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're fleeting, they're for a moment. Maybe they serve a purpose at the time, but for the most part, they're not probably what I find to be most beneficial. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I could see how that would be, feel forced at yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, the consistent theme is they're so valuable. Even if, even if you don't tell the person that, oh my gosh, I look up to you as a mentor. Like, yeah. it's almost as if that's an understood relationship, that's and that's right. what makes it so natural yeah. and valuable, yeah. right? Yeah. So do you also do, do you dad still talk shop every once in a while? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 He always he's like, oh, I, I read about your company in the Wall Street Journal today. <laughs> That's so great. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. So. I want to stay with the family theme for a second. Right. I may route back to dad asking about Wall Street Journal okay. stuff here in a second, but okay. the family theme. So, you know, a working mom yeah. and trying to find that balance mm -hmm. throughout your career. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no incorrect path, really. You face a point in the road, at least a fork in the road that I've understood where um, do I want to be a climber? Mm -hmm. and move up the corporate ladder right. or am I good right here mm -hmm. and uh, and balancing that with my family and you obviously chose to be a climber mm -hmm. which is great mm -hmm. and you have to find that work-life balance we talked a little bit about that it's really hard to do yeah how, how do you work through those mm -hmm. yeah so it's funny you say I chose to be a climber so I think that as you go through your career your choices sometimes change along the way. Um, so I wasn't always going to be a climber. Mm -hmm. I started off, oh, I'm going to be a climber. And then I had kids and all of that, you know, emotion and everything that comes along with that caused me to pause and think, well, maybe I don't need to climb that far or yeah. I don't need to climb right now. Um, and then as they get older and more self-sufficient, then you're like, okay, I'm going to climb again, right? Yeah. So as far as the whole kind of work-life balance as it relates to that, um, I feel like is not only something that you grapple with on a day-to-day -day basis, but something you do over the whole span of your career, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are times, and, and to me, what work-life balance looks like, it's not every single day, I need this many hours with my family, I need this many hours with my job. It's which one needs me more at the time, right? Yeah. So it's balancing that. It's, hey, right now, I've got something really, really big going on at work. I really need to focus in that direction yeah. um, for a little while. And then, you know, if that starts calming down and you, you know, you redirect and you can kind of reassess, okay, I need to focus more on the family, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and if there's any family crisis or whatever, well, then absolutely. The job has to kind of take a back seat for a while. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's those ebbs and flows that you have to yeah. work with. And honestly, I feel like it's, you know, as, as a female, um, that's certainly important. But I think it's for everyone, men and women alike. I yeah. think everyone deals with those types of situations, right? Um, and, and if they don't, they, they probably should be. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I love your perspective on that. You know, I was just listening to something uh, just this morning, and the guy said, look, when my kids were eight, nine years old, you know, they, they wanted two hours of my attention. Right. And I wanted to give them two hours of my attention because that's what they wanted. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they became 13 and 14 years old. Yeah. And they wanted four minutes of my attention. Right. And I needed to give them the best four minutes of their day, undivided That's attention. Right. That's right. And so that has an impact on what you, what time you can allocate to different things in your career. And that's, that's probably right. when you uh -huh. made that shift that's again. Right. That's right. Absolutely. And, and even along the way, you know, it was, it was a lot of learning opportunities for me. I mean, there were times where I got way overcommitted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I tried to be a, 
a Girl Scout leader and a PTA, you know, treasurer and a, yeah. a homeowners association treasurer and the soccer coach. And, you know, I'm trying to do all this and work. <laughs> and I'm like, that doesn't really work real well. So yeah. <laughs> found out the hard way. Yeah. Um, way too much focus on, you know, the home side. And so I started taking, you know, just kind of taking inventory and saying, okay, what what can I do that really impacts my kids? Mm-hmm. That they that gives me time directly with them, that they see mm-hmm. me. So being on the PTA treasurer, they didn't care about that. Yep. They didn't see me. So that went away, yeah. you know, so I focused on things where I could be in the classroom with them or I could, you know, be on the soccer field with them or be in front of them with the, you know, the, the Girl Scouts or yeah. things that were, that had high impact at that time when they were smaller. Um, and then, you know, and today, like you said, it's sitting down and listening to whatever YouTube they're excited about or oh, yeah. TikTok or, you know, oh, yeah. and, and yeah. trying to keep up with all that. You yeah. Know, so. And then every once in a while trying to make a TikTok video with them. Uh, yes. I, I get asked that all the time. Mom, you mind if I, if I include you in this video? I love it. I yeah. love it. That was so good. I love what you just said there. It is such a, a mountain and you're always questioning yourself. Sure. You know, am I doing the right thing? Mm-hmm. Am I investing enough time? Yeah. And I don't know that anybody has the right answer. Mm-hmm. I, and I don't think it's scripted. And, it, and it's different for everyone, right? Yeah. It's yeah. T- it's not scripted. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just, the the recommendation I would have to people is every once in a while, like you said, you your head starts getting blinders on and you start looking down mm-hmm. and just pick your head back up every once in a while and just assess. Same thing that we need to do in our careers. Sure. We have to do in our family. Pick Absolutely. your head up, assess where are we at mm-hmm. stage in life, yep. kid stage in life, and then you can start moving the puzzle pieces around. That's right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're wrapping up here shortly. I've got to touch on one thing because it, it is about communication. Okay. Yeah. So uh, at home, mm-hmm. publicly traded company. That's right. Was announced not too long ago mm-hmm. that y'all are being bought, taken back, private. Yes. Correct. Correct. Um, from a business standpoint, I would guess that people uh, at at home mm-hmm. would think, "Oh my gosh, what does that mean to me in my career?" Mm-hmm. You know, I'm on a reporting team, or I'm in this role, and mm-hmm. how does that impact me and my family? And yeah. should I look? And yeah, there's got to be a, a heavy discussion at the leadership level at at home mm-hmm. about how to communicate to your teams to the degree that you can. Right. Talk about communication in, in your environment right now with yeah. your teams. Yeah, you, it's you know it's it's a struggle. It is right because so many things, like especially in the beginning of the transaction, you know, if they were broadly communicated, um, we're going to have to be you know publicly communicated. Right? There's these rules as you're going through the mm-hmm. process, and you have to be careful about. So it's so hard not to be able to tell everybody everything you want to tell them, yeah. um, and and you know, everybody's worried and concerned and everything. So as the process has unfolded we have definitely tried to over communicate as much as we can right um, and and it's valid concerns I mean everyone and you know if you're going through any kind of change mm-hmm. um, you know that's that that causes angst and causes people to you know start wondering you know should I be looking for another job right um, but at the end of the day um, you know what what we've communicated is and and it is the case that um assuming the transaction is completed that it's just different owners right it is business as usual we are transforming we are you know getting out there and and making it happen and growing and Mm -hmm. you want to be part of a growing company right and um and regardless of who the owners are that's still going to happen right so um you know the the new potential owners they believe in management they want us to continue executing on our vision um, and that's what we intend to do. And we need every single one of these people that's worked there today to be there tomorrow, to be there after the transaction is completed, uh, to help us, you know, succeed in that. Yeah, that's yeah. such great feedback. That whether your company is going through a major transaction or not, the key is that communication because mm-hmm. leadership is a heavy burden to wear. That's right. You know, yeah. this this is how 
you know, people pay their mortgage and their mm-hmm. car note and how they yeah. survive yeah. and you want the best for those teams. And so yeah. you do not want anxiety creeping up to a level where the performance suffers not only at work, but just their mental cap- Mental health is so important in right. organizations and in personal yeah. lives. So that yeah. communication is the key, right? That's right. And that's it's as a leader, it's important to be grounded and to remember um, you know, if you put yourself in their shoes and what they're thinking, right, it's easy as a leader who's been brought along the way the whole time and you have all this information, you, you're you already to this point where you're comfortable and you've, you've, you've gone through all the stages of, of change, you know, mm-hmm. of accepting that change and learning about it and, you know, we're over here and now when we start communicating, we've got to bring our employees from here to where we are, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that's the important role as a leader is yep. in any change, right? It's, it's making sure, you know, obviously in any change, you're going to have situations where, you know, and, you know, you, you're you're suffering. Your your employees are you know their their work effort is suffering or whatever. It's your job as a leader to make that amount of time where that happens as short as possible. That's right. right. Um, expect it. You know, there's going to be a little bit of setback, but then you know you regroup, you get them on board, and you get them going, and you move forward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Such great advice. And sometimes it's as a team. Sometimes it's one-on-one. Sometimes right. it's one-on-two. Sometimes it's just passing well, people and, in the hall. And everybody's different, right? There are people that are going to get on board and be acceptance of change like that. And mm-hmm. there are others that are going to dig in their heels and be like, I am not going there. Yeah. Um, and, and it's your job as a leader to, to, you know, if you have to on a one-on-one basis, bring them with you. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and hopefully there's not anybody that gets left behind in the process. Right. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. that happens, but um, ideally, yeah. you know. The word that comes there. to mind mm-hmm. is is trust for me. That's, right. That's what, you know, because you're talking about that trust and you got to develop that trust with your employees. I, that word also came to mind earlier on when we were talking about um new people in the workplace and yeah. learning from millennials right. and learning from Gen Z who's going to be entering the workplace yeah. by giving them that verbal feedback of, yeah. oh, I loved it when you so- showed me that. That makes this easier and that that builds that trust, that's right. right? That's right. And and that's something that we need to strive for as leadership can demonstrate it to our teams. That's absolutely try- right. Um, so I actually, I've, I've read a ton of leadership books along the way. Yeah. Um, I make them available to my own employees to borrow. I put them on a bookshelf. They can come take them whenever they want. And one of them is The Speed to Trust. Okay. And I feel like it's a really good book that speaks to that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love making it available to yeah. your employees yeah. too. Yeah. That's great. We may, I, I may steal that. We may Absolutely. steal that. So that's, that's <laughs> really good. Um, okay. So we're, we're wrapping up here and I, I really would love to know what is, if you could give one or two action items, points of action or a takeaway for our younger audience who is growing in their career, mm-hmm. um, how do they, they want to grow, they mm-hmm. want to be a great employee, right? They want to be a high performer and achiever. Mm-hmm. What is your one or two pieces of advice that they can take action on? Yeah. So for me, when I sit down with any employee, um, I think I'm surprised by how many of them don't have a vision for where they want to be in the future, right? Even if that changes along the way, that's fine. But right now, have a vision of where you want to be so that you are constantly moving in that direction. Um, you're not looking at roles that are going to take you away from that goal, mm-hmm. um, that are going to pigeonhole you somewhere. Um, you know, if if you're somebody that just wants to be a steady eddy, stable Mabel, whatever, that's fine too. But you need to communicate that to your boss, to your manager, to let them know this is what I want, right? Mm-hmm. And and for me, there are roles in the company that need steady eddy and stable Mabel, right? And then there are roles that I need somebody that's going to be willing to advance and climb and I need succession planning. You've got to be able to communicate that. And I'm really shocked at how many people I sit in front of who can't communicate to me what they want. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And the thing that I think was great about that is it can change. That's right. Like we, we Just are Just because all, you're yes. saying right now this is what I want doesn't mean you were locked in. Sorry, that's what you decided, you know, 10 years ago. You can't change it yeah. now. No, I mean, you can change along the way. But right now, have a plan. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's so good. You know, people go to college and they get this degree and they're 21, 22 years old and they mm-hmm. get a degree and it's like, well, I guess I'm going to be a financial analyst yep. the rest of my rest life of my because life. <laughs> that's what it says on my diploma. That's and that's right. not the case. No, not at all. So I love that. Yeah, have a plan. So have a plan on what you want to do because it's okay if it changes. And it's also okay if you continue to grow into that plan. That's right. Absolutely. I love that advice. Absolutely. So, Lord, thank you so much for joining us today. This Absolutely. went by, it's like, this is the quickest one. I felt like it's gone by <laughs> quicker than any other one that we've had so far. So uh, well, you've, it's been fun. Yeah, you've provided such great content for our listeners and for me personally. Great, perfect. So I appreciate that so much. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And to our listeners, we thank you all very much for enjoy our, for joining us and hopefully enjoying us, I'd hope. Mm -hmm. Um, But joining us every other week here on the Unity Talks podcast. Thanks so much. And until next time. If you're looking for the next step in your career or the missing piece for your team, Unity Search has you covered. Whether it's finance and accounting, tax services, information technology, or human resources, Unity Search is here for you with experienced and dedicated hiring professionals. Reach out today and take the next step. Unity Search, placing you first.